Kyle Whittingham earlier during spring ball said that Utah could potentially look in the portal for another quarterback. Is Utah actually going to do it now that spring ball is over? Let's discuss. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcast. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you like and subscribe. Love interacting with all of you in the YouTube comments as well as on social media, where you can follow our show at Locked On Utes on X. Today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by our great friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College, all caps, no spaces, for twenty dollars off your first purchase. My name is JT Wister, so former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. Excited to be joined on today's show by former University of Utah kicker and collegiate kicker Moose Bingham. And Moose, we're talking about the transfer portal and quarterbacks, what everyone is always curious about. Who's my team's quarterback going to be and all things of that nature and source. Utah is obviously fine with their starting quarterback. And we can talk about how the backup quarterbacks did, not just in the 22 Forever game, but in spring ball in totality in a moment. But the transfer portal is always alluring because it's the unknown, right? So, like, you could potentially upgrade. There, we You don't know what's out there. So, I think that's where it's like, okay, well, Kyle Whittingham earlier in spring ball is saying, like, we might add one through the transfer portal. He didn't know how his guys were going to look over spring ball. You maybe even say that as motivation to those guys, kind of those mind games and things that coaches like to play with the guys on their roster. But while Utah could look in the portal – I don't think they're going to do it too seriously because of two things. Number one, we and we'll talk about this more in a second too, I was in pretty impressed with Rose and Wilson overall during spring camp. I feel like there's two really good, strong backup quarterback candidates that are in-house. And also, anyone that's really better than those guys is in the portal because they want to be a starter someone else. I just find it very hard to believe that they're going to go, oh yeah, let me use my final year of eligibility or let me waste a year of eligibility because if you're transferring someone else you probably weren't happy and probably already burned a red shirt in that scenario to go sit behind cam rising for a year on the off chance he gets hurt i I just don't think it's very likely that utah is able to find the backup quarterback they're looking for in the portal i think more than likely he's already on the roster and i think there's pretty two good two pretty good candidates for it (laughs) yeah there are two amazing candidates to be honest with you but kyle whittingham just you got to understand the realities of college football. Now you're always looking to upgrade each and every position. You're looking to upgrade your roster. And if there's an opportunity to do that, why wouldn't you take it? There's no reason to get hurt by feelings because you're just always knowing that the guys in your room or outside of your room want that job. And it could come that there's some guys, maybe like a Devin Brown doesn't get along with chip Kelly at Ohio state. And is like, Hey, I want to come back to the state where I had a great high school career. I already beat out um, Isaac Wilson once. I think I can do it again. Uh And that could be an interesting thing. I think it's really interesting. McKay Hillstead, who came into the Utah State, had almost 400 yards passing in his initial game against Air Force. He was electric. He could come in and do something special and be like, hey, you know what? I can be the quarterback of the future. But a lot of guys love Utah because they prepare quarterbacks for the NFL. They are very pass-friendly for quarterbacks. You're not throwing these 50-50 deep balls. You're finding the tight end. You're getting lots of yards. You're doing what it needs to do, and you always have a great running game and incredible O-line. So it's a very, very advantageous offense to be in that's going to allow you to get the stats you need, take care of the ball, and get your NFL projections going higher. And Cam Rising, I love the kid. I'm knocking on wood that he makes it through the whole season, but it hasn't happened very often. So you could sit in the wing saying, hey, I'm going to have an opportunity almost like USC in the early 2000s where if someone does go down or even if someone doesn't, you may have an opportunity to go to the NFL. 
It's a great point. There are plenty of guys who might think that is extremely alluring. And there's two guys in house who are at Utah in part for that reason, right? Brandon Rose and Isaac Wilson both want that opportunity. Wilson was a guy, Moose, I'll let you talk about him in a second because you were high on him even going into the spring game. And we saw it on display. Like even Yogi Roth, who was calling the game on the Pac-12 network, said he did not look like a freshman. And he absolutely did not. Some of the things he was doing with his eyes and just, man, the arm was on full display. It was really fun to watch him go to work. And you know, the guy in Brandon Rose who... No, this, I thought he didn't play great. I didn't think his supporting cast was awesome either, but he's been with this team for a while now. I've seen him do really good things in practices and spring games too. And the coaches obviously trust him enough where Utah didn't go harder after a backup quarterback previously when the transfer portal, the heat of it was open before spring ball. So I just think both these guys are really strong candidates for it. What are your thoughts on each player after spring ball is now closed? Well, I'm still high on both of them. I can't believe how long Cam Rising was in the game. I was like, no, 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 no. Leave him out of there. We know what he can do. But Cam Rising has a chip on his shoulder the size of Mount Rushmore. You're just like, bro, you don't have to go ham 24-7. But then when the backups came in, that's really what we're looking for. What can they do when they don't have a Keithy or a Carson Ryan or any of these other tools? What are they going to do when they don't have the safety valves? And I was flabbergasted, and I shouldn't have been, because I believe in Isaac Wilson, and the rest of Utah Nation does as well right now, because of what they were able to see. The vision, the eyes, the reading. I mean, it was like watching a college professor out there dictating where the ball goes and placing it chef's kiss beautifully where it needed to be. Rosen wasn't bad either. He had good stats. He did really great. And I was really impressed with Brandon as well. Yeah, Brandon Rose did some nice things in the game and throughout all of the spring practice we were able to watch. Wilson really popped in the game. Of course, he looked like the better of the two in the game, but obviously there's some things. Just It's hard to for a freshman to win Kyle winning camps trust right away, so we'll see how that backup. It's going to continue to rage come fall camp. So I think we're in agreement. There's probably not going to be much quarterback movement in the transfer portal for the guys who are both still fighting for it as well as guys coming in to join the fray. But as for other positions Utah could be looking at, I want to give you credit. And I think you were actually on the episode when we reacted to the Leovani Demuni injury that Utah unfortunately sustained. It does feel like after spring ball, that linebacker could be a place that Utah looks in the transfer portal. Guys like Justin Medlock left. Leovani Demuni is out for the year. There were a lot of passes in the spring game given up kind of over the middle of the field. And I'm not going to sit here and claim I know all the intricacies of how the Utah defense works and that this guy was supposed to be here and there. But it does just feel like you want another player to back up Corinne Reed and Lander Barton, who didn't play in the game. But I just think the linebackers is a unit that after the spring game and we got to see a full taste of them, feels like that room could use a boost of a veteran that DeMooney was obviously supposed to be until we unfortunately lost him for the season already. Well, thank the good Lord above that Lander Barton and Corinne Reed are going to be in the starting lineup because wow. it's going to be tough to get passes over the middle. It's going to be mm -hmm. tough to get passes off, period, with the defensive line we have. And I think a lot of the safeties are going to step up as well because it takes a minute to understand the defense, the intricacies, what the strengths and weaknesses are, what's going on in front of you, and passing off different receivers – whether you're playing a zone defense or a man defense. So there's a lot of things that's going to come over the summer where these guys are going to be like, in spring ball, we did this, but in the game situations, we're going to have to do that. So you're going to see those things cleaned up, especially when you have a Morgan Scally and Kyle Whittingham defense, and you're not going to see those mental errors and mistakes. And that's what spring ball is for, to make those mental errors, to make those mistakes so that you can do a lot of different things. And usually in the spring game, the defense is pretty vanilla. It's to let the offense get a little bit of confidence. Let's be honest with each other. But mm -hmm. I think that they could go after another linebacker, especially with Damuni hurt. And who knows if Damuni wants to come back? He's married. He has a lot of things going for him where they're like, we could grab a linebacker of the future right now if we don't like what's in house. And with the transfer portal, they may force a couple guys out. The other thing is there could be some talk about running backs as well. I yeah. know we did have some injuries at running back. And if Utah doesn't have a good running game and a running back that can get things done, oh, no, that's kind of like one of our pillars for what we do. Good defense, good running game. And you don't want to put everything on a quarterback, even though this is the year I feel comfortable putting everything on a quarterback. So looking for that, I think that's another position 
where it's like we possibly could go after another running back if one hits the portal because I think there's going to be some G5 guys that are phenomenal players that are like, we want to go somewhere where we're going to get paid. We're going to have a lot of fun and run behind an offensive line that's going to run us right into the NFL. And that's what Utah will do for them. Yeah, that would be fascinating because it feels like there there's a lot of names in the Utah running back room, but right, you're right. Injuries always pop up. McKay Bernard got hurt last year. And, you know, also some guys just don't pan out. So it's definitely a position to keep an eye on. Last thing really quick that you just made me think about. Lander Barton. Is he on this Utah football team in 2025, or are we talking about him in the NFL draft? In 20, I think he's a first round draft pick next year. You I, know, hope, okay. I like it. I hope he's not on the Utah team. <laughs> and I know a lot of Utah fans will be like, oh, blasphemy. Get off the get him off of here. No, he's going to be a great representative for the University of Utah in the NFL, just like both of his brothers were. And he's probably gonna have a 10, 12 year hopefully 20 year NFL career. And then he's going to get his farm in Montana. He's been talking about that since he was a freaking sophomore in high school. He is a country boy. He wants to do country boy things. And I love to see the Bartons and they're going to go have a lot of fun in the NFL and then go have a lot of fun on their ranch after the fact. Yeah, that definitely seems like it's the case, and I would agree with you. I do think Lander will not be a member of this team in 25, which means – I mean, Utah's going to be losing a lot next year. That's definitely a discussion on a future episode. But I do want to talk a little bit more with you about spring ball moves because it's over. So what were the kind of big takeaways we had? What do we think now that all the data has been collected and we can analyze over it? We're going to be talking about all of that in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you about something exciting we have on the Locked On Network, a new sponsor we're running, our friends at Monopoly Go. I've been told I'm a competitive person. And yes, it's definitely true. But I can let my competitive side out because now I'm a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you the big money. And the best part is I can mess with my friends. I can charge them rent on my income properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of my riches for myself. And the leaderboards shows me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon even is. But it's not just a competitive side that loves it. You can also win with your friends too, once you're done messing with them, of course, because you can play with people all around the world too in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or Google Play Store. At the end of the show, me and Moose are going to be talking about some NFL stuff that pertains to Utes in the NFL, soon to be. And if you guys are curious about the NFL draft, make sure you check out Locked On's Mock Draft Live special on April 17th at 7 ET. Streaming on Locked On Sports Today's 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channel. You can find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 p.m. ET to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with the live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle locked on nfl mock draft on april 17th at 7 et is streaming live on locked on sports today 24 7 streaming channels or on youtube or that free amazon fire tv channel app moose talking about our spring ball thoughts now that we've had a chance to collect them and it's all over there's a lot of takeaways you can have i think the thing i'm most encouraged about exiting spring ball is the state of the secondary there are so many safeties that look so good. And yes, we talked about it. And Morgan Scally and Sharif Shaw, we trust. But we were just trusting in the coaches, even though you felt like it was going to happen. It was nice to have those thoughts and feelings of this is going to work confirmed by watching Nate Ritchie run around and make plays. We heard about all the things Teo Johnson was able to do. He was clearly one of the winners of spring ball, as was Keenan Johnson, who popped on several occasions. Cameron Calhoun really stepped up in the spring game, and that's without even mentioning the Smith Snowdens, the Zamaya Vaughns of the world. There are so many players in this Utah defensive backfield, and I just think that's got to be one of the biggest takeaways is that even though we thought the secondary would be fine, the, the secondary is definitely going to be fine. And yes, I know they gave up some yards in the spring game really quick. I wanted to throw that out there. A lot of the the guys I mentioned didn't play in that game. And even a guy like a Nate Ritchie who did, he's part of the reason Brandon Rose didn't get off to a great start. It's because what he was doing on that side of the ball. Dude, Nate Ritchie is just one of a kind. 
He'll pick the ball, he'll run it in for a touchdown, and then he'll kick the PAT and get you water after. You he is one freaky athlete. I'm really encouraged with this Utah defense. Let's be honest here. The Big 12 is known for putting up lots of points. They're known for doing a lot of things that's going to be very flashy. The Utah defense is a nightmare for every single offensive coordinator in the Big 12, and I don't think they're ready for what the Utah defense is going to bring to them and how they're going to bleed the clock with the running back and the tight ends. This Utah team has just cemented themselves as the favorite for me in the Big 12 after that spring ball. I was just like, okay, even if the starters go down, goodness gracious, great balls of fire, we're still cooking with gasoline and oil. This is still Shreve Shaw. This is still Morgan Scally. And these defensive backs are going to be ready. The D line's going to bring the wood. And the linebackers, when we have our starters in, are the scariest duo in the country. It's going to be special. It's going to be a lot of fun to see this unit clicking on all cylinders. And you mentioned it, Moose. This Utah defense is going to be scary. And the Big 12 defenses are not. And the Big 12 pass rushes aren't exactly the most ferocious either. Look, it's way too early for like next year. You're like, like knowing every NFL guy that's going to be on a Big 12 defense. I have a hard time believing Utah is going to see a guy like Latu that UCLA had. That is part of the reason that Utah only scored seven offensive points in that game. The other one being the pick six from Karen A. Reed. But I think this Utah offensive line, which was another unit I had questions about. And in some ways, I still have questions about it. I'll even be transparent about that because, hey, we haven't seen them live. That's a group where there's so much inexperience there still versus a lot of the other guys have game experience. It's going to be a really a new group playing together. And a guy like, yes, there's still things up in the air. I loved what I saw from Lomu. Fano looked really comfortable at right tackle. I think the interior still got a thing or two to work out together. But I mean, even just like the blind side, I feel really good about that for Utah. I thought Lomu was really impressive all his spring and the spring game was no exception. No, Fano's natural position is right tackle, as funny as yep. that is. He really went out of his comfort zone, played left tackle yeah. for the first time in his career going over there. Lomu has really impressed me, like you said. And here's the question for you. Do you know what sharpens iron? I think it's iron, Moose. Iron sharpens iron. You're <laughs> absolutely correct. When you're going against the defensive front that Utah has each and every day, you have no option to get better. You do have an option, actually. Get your trash kicked every single day. Go to film room with your tail between your legs, which I'm sure this offensive line has done a time or two. But Harding will get them right. And he says, they've kicked your butt on this. Now you're going to do this. And the chess match has begun. You're going to see the improvement from the offensive line. They're going to go from inexperience to solid first-day starters in the matter of months. And I'm so excited because all of these guys, even though they're quote unquote inexperienced, they have the height, they have the weight, they have the stamina and the strength to give us our four or five yards in a cloud of dust, depending on who's behind them on at running back. And that's what we need. They're tough in the run game and they're ferocious in the pass game. I love their kick steps and I love the competition in the interior. Jaron Kump, is he finally going to be that four star in the interior? Yeah that we've been waiting for. Moko Fisi, he's got that defensive line mentality, bringing it to the offensive line. And who's going to be the starting center? Maybe Johnny Maya. I mean, there's a lot of guys in here that we're going to be going around, and it could even be Kump at center. He's played all yeah. five positions. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see that, but I just love that we've got our two freshman bookends, basically, on the outside. And we're going to be raising up these guys and be competing for three spots that who knows who, who what's going to happen at the end of the day. It's going to be so fun to watch it play out. It feels like there is a lot of strength on this offensive line, and I can't wait to see how they come together. I already talked about the secondary. We both talk, we've talked about the secondary and the offensive line now, Moose, but I am curious, is there anything else, just your general spring ball thoughts that we haven't mentioned yet outside of quarterbacks, offensive line, and secondary that you think is noteworthy from this spring? So I was pretty upset to see some of the tight ends hit the portal, like Johnson oh. from Salem Hills. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what are we going to do? The tight end room is just doing great. Freaking Whittingham does a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. I'm like, 
anyone that wants to come play tight end, go to Utah. You'll be just fine. Yeah. And that's the crazy thing to watch. It's like, who the heck is this fifth string tight end that looks like they could start at any FBS program? And that's just how they operate. You're just like, okay, so we have a factory here. And the University of Utah could be tight end you when everything's said and done. I definitely agree with that. I mean, Moose, a guy like Landon King is just so fun. You saw, you see a couple of the grabs he made in the spring game. We got a taste of his skill set last fall. I think he had less than 200 yards on the season, but just like whenever he made a grab, it was an impressive one and left you optimistic about his future. And look, we know about Carson Bryant. We know about Brant Keithy. King's going to make his way on the field a lot too. And I just can't wait to see all these pieces come together for the Utah offense. And a lot of these guys, Moose, they're going to have a chance to be pros outside of Landon Barton, who we already discussed, in the 2025 NFL Draft. But first, we are about a week and a day away from the 2024 NFL Draft, which is funny in some ways how quick it's been, but it also feels like the spring, uh, the Senior Bowl was a while ago, so it's kind of funny how those things always work together. But we're going to be talking about the NFL Draft and the Utes that are going to be selected a little over a week from now in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at Yahoo Finances. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. Let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation, to pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of you and financial freedom. Right? With Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the new data and tools that you need in order to help reach that financial freedom. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. You've saved, you've researched, you've invested, all that. And now you need to take those investments to the next level by using what every great Finance financial person uses Yahoo Finances. For more than 24 five years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analysis ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. So you guys can head over today and check out everything they have going on at Yahoo Finance. All right, Moose, closing this one out. NFL draft for Utah. I think there hasn't been a ton of crazy news shaking up data, anything wild. I still feel like Cole Bishop is going to be the first guy off the board. Jim Nagy recently said that NFL teams are really high on him. Okay, you're giving me a weird look, so I'm curious about who you think is going to be that guy. I think Bishop is going to be end up, end up being the first youth off the board as of right now. I think Jonah Ellis will follow him. I think, so, yeah, you like Ellis first. I love Ellis, too. We can talk about that in a moment. So, Tao Rao will <laughs> be the next guy there. I think Sione Vaki will be the final you drafted. I think most recently I saw that, uh, uh, I think it's Dane Burglar, I want to say this, from The Athletic. I probably butchered that. He had this one thing he put out. It's called The Beast. It ranks, like, all these safeties. I saw a Division Two running back on it. It's absolutely wild what he compiles and puts together. But he had Vaki in the sixth round. I'm curious to see if he lasts that long, too. But we are a little over a week and a half away. How do you see the draft shaking out for Utah? So Ellis is going to go first. Let's just say Why? that right here, right now. Why is he going to go first? Because he's Why? been cleared medically. He's one of the most productive edge rushers, and he's from a point of – he's really at a position of need for a lot of teams that I think after the first round they're going to grab their offensive tackle, then they need their pass rusher to come in. Yeah. Safety isn't as high of a position of need for most teams. And I think that's why Ellis is going to go first. I think he'll go around probably like end of second round, beginning of third. And I think Cole Bishop will be about the same, maybe 10 pick difference, to be honest with you. But I think Ellis is going to go first. And then I think Sautoa is going to come in probably fourth round. Sione Vaki, I don't see him getting past the fifth round, to be honest with you. There's a couple teams that really, really like him. And then I think Keaton Bills is going to sneak his way into probably like I'm going to rate him Mr. Irrelevant right now uh -huh. because I just want him to see him on a parade and doing his thing because he's a great kid and will do a lot of good things. I was actually at in and out today and funny thing about Keaton Bills, he, yeah. um, yeah, he uh, worked at in and out. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I'd always laugh because I kept hearing that all the Utah coaches would go to in and out every Thursday night. And I'm like, why are they going to in and out in Draper? 
And then I found out they were having their coaches meetings where Keaton Bill's words. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. University of Utah coaches got me again. And Keaton's like, yeah, I'm going to Utah and I'm going to be playing D-line. I'm like, you're not playing D-line, but you're going to have a heck of a time out there. And so Keaton Bills is going to be having a great career, but I think he can go seventh, maybe even sixth round. I think he had a good pro day. I think he did a lot of good things. That's going to propel him into that thing. And then we're going to have the tight ends going to go. We're going to have Juan Vele, Micah Mm -hmm. Pittman. We're going to have, and then possibly Micah Bernard as well might sneak in. Oh, for like next year you're talking about? Uh, For this year. Sorry. Bernard is Bernard still at Utah. You're good, by the way. Oh, crap. Yeah, (laughs) my bad. I'm just so excited because I'm like, that dude's an NFL guy as it is. No, I'm thinking yeah. of the tight end. And- you said 25 next year, so you are all good. Let's go back. For, uh, we'll work backwards. I totally agree with you with Sione. Uh, and I'll throw Bills in there, too. I do think, like, just with the premium that is on, even though Bills is clearly an interior offensive lineman, those aren't as valuable as tackles. You have to protect him. Bills did that a long time for a Pac-12 championship caliber team for years. I think he's really got a shot to sneak into the sixth or seventh. I didn't say his name originally, but I did mention that big beast thing that the Athletic put out. He was on there as a sixth or seventh round type of guy. I think he is going to squeeze in. And then we go back from there. Sione's just too fast. I know his 40 didn't blow people away. I'm talking about change of direction. He's going to get drafted, and I'd be surprised if he made it out of the fifth round as well. Can't teach that type of speed, and especially not that type of versatility. He's been rumored that the Jets' defensive coordinator loved him at the Senior Bowl. If I can see Sione Vaki catch a pass from Aaron Rodgers, that would just be hilarious, I feel like. Just like what this random crossover of worlds of like what in the world is – what year are we at? All these kind of crazy things like that. Um, and then continuing from there, we both feel the same way about Satawa. And well, really quick, let's do the Cole and uh, Jonah thing. I You mentioned it. Jonah's clear. Michael Penix is clear too. And I think he's going to fall because of past injury concerns. I think some teams are going to get a little scared away by Jonah. Ellis. We see this every draft cycle. They make mistakes because of injuries. Cole really never got hurt. I think his versatility is really key. I think he's helped himself a lot throughout the draft process by being able to compete at the combine, just meet with teams and do all those things. And I know Ellis was able to meet with teams, but I just think some of these teams, they get a little scared away. And to quote the great Moose Bingham, I think it's going to be a 10 pick difference between Cole Bishop and Jonah Ellis. Oh, you went the other way. You flip flopped. (laughs) Little snip, snap, snip, snap. I see you. But I still think with... It's a premium position. It There's, is. You're right. That's what makes the difference for me. If all things were created equal and all kickers were the same as all quarterbacks, I would say I'm 100% in agreement with you. But you make money by protecting your quarterback, by being a quarterback, or by stopping the quarterback. And Jonah Ellis can stop quarterbacks. He's someone that they need to game plan around. And I think because of his injury, that's why he falls to the second round. I don't think he can fall much past that. He's a tremendous talent, and you're right. The premium on pass rushes in the NFL could very well lead to him being the first selected. Uh, by the way, very impressed with your ability to work a kicker reference into that. I was wondering if you were going to be able to get one in before the episode expired, and you all, I almost missed it too. So well, well played, <laughs> sir. Well played, sir. But uh, Moose, we always appreciate you hopping on. Uh, tell everyone what kind of things you got going on right now. So the big thing for me, honestly, one of my good friends, Dusty Lister, was just diagnosed Mm -hmm. with um, cancer, brain cancer, Mm -hmm. has some tumors and needs some help. He was one of the first people to interview me in my athletic career. He's helped hundreds of thousands of people at this point with sports, and he's a big person in the local media, and they're doing a GoFundMe. Jeff Hansen put it on, one of our good friends. And I just think it's a great thing to donate to at this point. So let's help Dusty out, do what we can. Go follow Jeff Hansen. Don't follow Jeff Hansen, but go to his Twitter and go and donate to Dusty's uh, GoFundMe and make sure you click the thing to make sure you don't give a lot of money to GoFundMe. Give it all to Dusty, help his family. He just switched jobs and he was doing um, his high school stuff alone instead of doing other jobs so it'd be a great thing to give him some money and help him out and help out the community that we're in 
Yeah, I wouldn't be in the position I am in my career without Dusty playing simple as well, too. Uh, he's the one who put us together to work together for the first time, too, Moose. So he's been an incredible friend and mentor to me. So I would highly encourage you guys to follow over to Jeff's socials, donate there, and help and support Dusty, his family. He's uh, truly one of the best people I've met in this business and also an incredible broadcaster who has taught me so much as well, too. So, uh, Moose, we appreciate you stopping by again, and thank you for bringing awareness to that worthy cause. Yeah, anytime. Go Utes. Go Utes. That's going to do it for our episode today. Make sure you guys come back tomorrow as we'll be talking more things Utah football. We look forward to seeing you then.